All right, we are back looking at middle childhood social and emotional development. And I want to look at first at, of course, uh, emotions and emotional self-regulation. Lots of advances. What I want to say right now is smooth sailing. Uh, middle childhood is a time of remarkable contentment, uh, remarkable emotional stability. Um, we're calling the middle childhood the golden age of emotionality. This is a time of high emotional well-being, negative emotions significantly decline during this time, emotional self-regulation is growing and growing, of course the environment is requiring this much more of the children, lots more new contexts in schools and peer relationships, activities, those organized sports, etc. All of these new contexts that they're in, these new environments, they create demands that they must be emotionally self-regulating. So this helps uh, that smooth sail as they're involved in these new places. Um, emotional understanding also advances. Okay, they're getting themselves more and they're getting others more. I get your emotions, I get where you're coming from or how you feel that way. So if I get that, my capacity for empathy also increases significantly during this time. Um, my cognitive um, abilities are advancing so I can take your perspective better. Um, I'm not so egocentric in my thinking, right? Um, what else do I want to say? They understand this idea of ambivalence with emotions, which I think is really interesting. They become aware that, you know what, things aren't so cut and dry all the time. That I might feel scared but excited, right? That I might have two contradicting emotions or I might have many emotions, mixed emotions, right? Um, and that we have emotional states. They're getting this, right? Like, I'm happy my team won, but I'm really sad my best friend was on the other team and they lost. Um, they're also leaning, learning, excuse me, how to conceal their emotions more. They can regulate now, they can show it. So like, think of the time when they receive the gift from great grandma or grandma or something that they don't love, um, but they know socially how to accept an emotion or accept a gift, receive a gift with gratitude. Um, so this, I think it's kind of funny, the concealing of emotions that we can see now. Um, okay, so smooth sailing emotional advancement here. Let's move on to self-understanding. Um, so self-understanding, again, huge, huge, huge growth uh, in this social-emotional stage of middle childhood. Um, there's these distinctions that have been made now, and sociologist George Mead made this distinction. And these are some questions on your workbook here, so pull that out so you can answer these. Um, what he called the I-self and the me-self. So he just said the I-self is how I believe others view me. And the me self is, how do I view myself? So both of these change in really important ways in middle childhood. The I self, how I believe others view me and how I view myself. So we have self, something called the self-concept and that's how we view and evaluate ourselves, the self-concept, the me self, right? And the I self is how they view me. So self-concept, how we view and evaluate ourselves changes from internal to external in middle child. And you can see this um, through social behaviors, right? Um, self-concept, children begin to describe themselves more in psychological or personality related terms much more than they used to. And their social comparisons are becoming a little bit more accurate. It's not when I was, you know, early childhood, I'm the best in the world at this game. No, I'm going to get like, there's other people that might be a little bit better than me. So my social comparisons are more accurate. And this is because of my self-concept. I also am developing during this time my self-esteem more and more. And remember, self-esteem is that overall sense of, the overall sense of worth, overall sense of well-being. And this becomes much more differentiated in middle childhood. My self-esteem is going to be based on things like, um academics or sports or popularity or whatever it might be. I have these more self-concepts that develop. Um, so I have me in my social world, me in my academic world, me in my soccer world, whatever it might be here. And I'm going to have different self-esteem regarding those differentiated uh, worlds. Another thing I want to think about is culture and the self. This is a concept that varies among cultures, this idea of self and thinking about self and who am I. Sometimes your culture might value an independent self. Sometimes your cultures might value an interdependent self. So navigating that and understanding that in your culture. Most cultures are not usually purely just one or the other. So we have to understand that. 
We also understand that when we're developing ourselves, our parents are gonna influence that. And that's gonna influence our self-esteem. So our parenting style, the culture we grow up in is going to impact things like self-esteem. It's gonna impact things like self-concept and the I-self and the me-self and how I look at that and develop that. All right, I'm gonna pause here and there's gonna be another video starting up with gender development.